It's Tanisha Burgess, CEO and founder of Synergy Plus, as well as creator of Fireside Chats for Global Women and Phoenix Rising Exclusives. You guys will not believe I'm having an amazing guest on right now. But guess what time it is here in Atlanta, Georgia, in the U.S.? One, almost 1 a.m., about 15 minutes till 1 a.m. And I am bringing on none other than Salsa Bila all the way from Saudi Arabia. What? It's about 8 a.m. in Saudi Arabia, almost 1 a.m. 1 a.m. here. <laughs> Look at me. I can't even talk. 1 a.m. here in the U.S. But we know that the time doesn't matter. We have a message that we want to share, things that we want to chat about, and I can't wait for you guys to see this chat. I think it's going to be amazing. We are bridging, seriously bridging gaps between women here in the U.S. and women abroad in our neighboring countries who are doing amazing things that we ought to know about. So I can't wait for you guys to listen to this chat. I think you're going to be empowered and inspired. I already am. I look so forward to you guys seeing this, and I'm so excited about doing this. I mean, this is seriously bridging our global ties. All right? We'll see you in a bit. Can you tell them my eyes that it's 1 a.m. here? Do I look all right? Whatever. <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. Bye. Great. I'm glad I'm excited. Thank you. So what's made you contact me? <laughs> Or connect. Well, I'm happy. so if you, yeah, if you remember how, do you remember how we got connected at all? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. so was through the Lisa Nicholas. Yeah, that was amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so thank you, Lisa Nichols. If you ever watch this, this yes. is happening all because of that amazing speak and write. Saw Sabila and I and so many other people followed each other. That day, we were all let in to the Speak and Write seminar through the live portal. So we were able to get on there through their webinar, through their live portal, and kind of be a part of that whole experience. And everybody was so amazing. It was really like a tribe. So many of us followed each other. I've connected with so many women across the globe. But you especially, for me, was so important because you are a part of our neighboring country, right? So the other women that we connect with are right here in the U.S. It's really rare that we get this opportunity to connect this personally with women in our yeah. neighboring countries. So yes, that was part you. of the reason that I wanted to reach out to you. And then, and everybody that I followed and kind of followed back, I went to everybody's page just to see you know, what everyone was doing and who they were. And when I went to your page, I was like, okay, this is a woman I want to chat with. So, um, <laughs> you know, seeing you on the TED Talk stage, although I watched the entire TED Talk, even though I didn't <laughs> understand a word of anything, I was like, God, I wish I could hear, I wish I could understand what she's saying, especially when you, and we're not going to give it all away, but I wish I could have understood everything. But now we have the opportunity for you to kind of tell us what that was all about and the whole mission behind SLAP. So, um, so I respect, I respect you. I respect what you're doing, what you're trying yes. to do globally for men, women, for young men and women who want to be able to study abroad. And I respect it. I think it's amazing. So that's why uh, I had to have you a part of the fireside. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Thank let's you. Do it. Yes, absolutely. A certified mentor and multi-award winner of Toastmasters International, Salsa Bila Al Harbi, or Sally, is paving the way for those in Saudi Arabia as a woman whose mission is to empower globally. She took to the stage as a TEDx speaker at the 2014 TED Talks in Al Karbar. With over 98,000 views and still counting of her talk on the topic of slap, Sal Sabila has joined us by the fireside to share her mission of raising the bar through influencing young women and men who desire to leverage the opportunities and study abroad. Please help me in welcoming Sally to the fireside. It's my pleasure and uh, you know I'm my my mission also is not just for those who are traveling abroad it's it's a it, you know there are uh, people I'm passionate the youngsters I'm passionate about you know educating uh, having them prepared find also their uh, their strengths uh, and um, don't 
uh, you know, just have a little bit of overview so they don't fall into uh, the pitfalls that you know, usually happen with someone who wasn't exposed to experience, different experiences of uh, people who have maybe been there before. Uh, but uh, really my mission is just to inspire everyone. Uh, that's what I hope for uh, to, you know, I'm just at the little, you know, just the, the start. And uh, I really want to expand, uh, as you said, the Phoenix, you know, expand ah! wings. <laughs> right. Well, honey, I'm going to say, I'm going to say you have your wings. You're doing so much already. And I'm sure so many things that we don't get a chance to see. And we're excited to have you here so we can know more about what this mission entails. But what I'm sure a lot of us want to know right now is how did this all start for you? Where did this mission start? And why did you decide to get involved in inspiring on this level? Um, I, I, I'm not sure how far back, but I remember um, as a teenager, I used to listen to speakers and um, you know, inspiring speakers or impactful speakers. And they can be from different walks of life. You know, some are maybe... Um, religious, some are political, some, but I just see how people listen and change and uh, get inspired, uh, uh, move, do something different, realize that they have uh, different powers. So um, instead of just staying stagnant in where they are, stuck in where they are. So I thought, I, you know, maybe as a teenager, I would say, I wish. I could have a that power. I wish I could have a message. I don't even know what my message would be, but I want to be able to inspire people. I want to be able to uh, help people to uh, to raise them up, and uh, um, I want to do that for myself also first. Right. So uh, that's how it started, and I just had that dream. And every time I see. Uh, speakers, I would just, you know, imagine myself on stage. And uh, then I, you know, they started, we started having this international, um, um, on TV, international uh, programs. And one of yes. them was Oprah. So I was like, oh my, I wish I could be so inspiring. I wish I could have an impact. And it then became one person after the other. I found Toastmasters and I was just so happy. And it was mm -hmm. like, uh, I w I w I've already started my career and I found Toastmasters. And I said, this is the place I can start with. It really helped me a lot, giving me the confidence and the, the courage to stand up. But I, I just never knew. Uh, what my message is and um, you know as I went through my career I really realized that I can help people uh, inspire them encourage them to do better in their careers uh, motivate them and also I can inspire youngsters because um, I was um, the eldest in around like many teenagers around me uh, in my family so yeah. uh, until like uh, couple of weeks ago someone told me you have impacted my life in different ways than my par parents would have so mm. uh, and I thought wow I and I just got a call two days ago from someone who says you remember me um, um, I called you uh, we talked five years back wow and I said no I don't remember she said you were you gave this presentation at uh, our company uh, her company was Mustang and uh, you gave a, a speech and then I came and asked you, I was stuck in my career and I came and asked you, what can I do? Uh, I need to change jobs. And usually because my current uh, job is a re recruiting an HR. Yeah. So they want me to recruit them to my company, which is a huge company. So my wow. the company I work for. So uh, the, you know, I just gave her the advice of, what are the things that she can do to be uh, to, to, to expand, to be better, to do better? You know, it doesn't have to be changing uh, because right. the opportunity is not always there. You don't have to change the company you're working in. Just change the things you're doing in your company. Change the things you're doing uh, where you are. Uh, mm -hmm. Be present, be visible. 
So right. I just gave him a few tips. I don't even remember what those tips are were <laughs> at that time. She called me two days back and she said, "Do you remember me?" I said, "I'm sorry, you know, I, you know, even the number is not recorded there in my phone." So uh, she told me, "I've listened to your advice, and now I'm holding a really major position in a company." Um, and it's an international company, and I'm also liaisoning with other companies. So thank you for your advice. Five years That's later, amazing. <laughs> that I is thought, amazing. Okay, just like this is the best thing I've heard, you know, uh, since long time. So yeah, thanks for that. I thank God for the blessing. I thank Allah for giving me my, you know, uh, this um, uh, gift to be able yeah. to help even though even if it's a you know little by little step by step but at least i know that i can do something and i really Absolutely. want to expand i want to empower women i want to empower uh teenagers i want to empower men so yes. it's it's a, it's a thing it's a global uh it's a thing that i want to do globally um and just helping people realize that they can be different and they can rise that's right time. That's right. Now you mentioned, I want to, there are two points that you mentioned. I want to go back to them. Um, so in 2013, you spoke at a conference on direct selling in international markets, uh, obtainer global direct, right? Yes. What was your point of discussion? What points did you feel were important to note in regards to international representatives and companies who wanted to expand globally? Um, uh, this actually started uh, um, maybe in 2011 or around that time uh, when I gave a speech to a company. The thing, you know, the one thing I did like really differently and um, I took a step towards um, enhancing my career or, not, or finding a different career. Uh, supporting myself financially um, while I was in my job during you know having my job I started uh, I joined the network marketing company which mm -hmm. is still a taboo <laughs> in where I am because uh, the people and even the the regulations do not there's no regulations for it here and uh, people do not understand however I did start and uh, it was very difficult because people would do not understand that I'm growing a big, huge business. Uh, they just look at me as someone who's maybe, you know, why, why would you need to sell? This is what they mm -hmm. why would you have a really great job? Why would you need to sell? Uh, wow. is, are you in need of that like $10 or something? Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was really um, I, you know, I, I just heard so many, you know, names have been called and stuff, but I continued because I believe that it could make me, um, uh, um, a really good income. And it did years after it did. Um, I spoke at, uh, on stage in 2011, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe 2010, uh, and the, uh, editor, uh, chief editor or the owner, actually, a founder of the uh, Obtainer magazine was present. And I was talking about my success story in Dubai uh, uh, to the members of the network marketing company that I, uh, I've i joined. And I had mm -hmm. a really, really good success story. So he was impressed and he uh, asked me to start writing for them uh, in their magazine. And then he um, he selected, you know, globally. Uh, uh, several women who th he thought were really successful and he had us on like had a special edition for that and then he ran a competition that's where you see in my CV or in my um, bio uh, where uh, I won the global um, uh, obtainer yes. award uh, mm -hmm. because he ran a competition it was on Facebook and it yes. was uh, between me and two other men and, you know, I just thought I wouldn't get this. Um, I just, you know, like overnight, I think it ran for three weeks, the competition, wow. like overnight. I just started getting these, you know, followers and people were just select voting for me on the wow. Facebook vote. Yeah. And then I won the award. So from there on, um, I, I, I was invited 
in 2013 to speak in their, uh, during the, their global conference. And there were different network marketing and direct sales companies from all over the world. And my message was that uh, um, many people do not uh, understand or do not know that Muslim women were business women long time ago, and mm. they were empowered. Uh, you know, um, they had they held um, uh, like really um, um, high authority positions in mm -hmm. the community uh, you know, during uh, the beginning of Islam and throughout. It's just right. throughout the history and the cultures and everything people forgot and i wanted to right. make sure that people understand that and know that we are empowered we were empowered something happened later on well we know what happened right we we we, we can speculate a number of things that happen we can you know blame it on you know, the male patriarchy right uh, we can blame it on just this idea that women were made to just serve to be married yes. be pregnant have babies and that was the extent of our lives that was you know the idea of why um some believe women were created so just what have you noticed in recent years in the evolution of the woman in Saudi Arabia as it relates to scaling in business, as it relates to being more empowered? Because we know, although a lot of change has happened, there's still so far to go. But what have you noticed around you as it relates to the dynamics between men and women as far as the opportunities that women have compared to men? Um, uh, you know, this is really uh, <laughs> uh, their question. Um, actually, in the past uh, several years, I don't know, you know, I cannot, you know, just specify, maybe let's say six years, the, um, the growth of uh, businesses by women has been just, um, you know, amazing. Um, it's, it's just unbelievable because uh, uh, internet and especially like uh, yes. uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, everyone, mm -hmm. like, you know, you, every other house, they have an Instagram account and they're doing something, you know, from hand, uh, handmade things to home-baked things. And I've known uh, women yeah. who started just, just little and now they already have opened their own bakeries or in, own cake shops. And it's just impressive. And men are doing the same thing. But I just see uh, that uh, women are just, the girls are just way ahead. We're, we're, we're crushing it on so many levels. Yeah. And maybe it's because of the food industry, the mm -hmm. cake shops and the... Um, the uh, cooking, but what happened also recently and see the influence, you know, because so many women are uh, on Instagram are already offering a uh, home catering and really good home catering and buffets and even uh, wedding catering. Men started doing that. I'm just impressed by the wow. men chefs, like the young Saudi men. They are not, you know, now they are proud to say I'm a chef. Ten years hey. back, no one would have a courage to say I'm a chef. Like a man mm -hmm. cooking, no way. <laughs> so wow. this wow. has been really the changes for women. Now the opportunities. When I joined uh, 1990, like giving out out here my mm -hmm. age. Uh, <laughs> in 1990, yeah. when I joined the company, I, I joined as an apprentice, uh, mm -hmm. a trainee, and mm -hmm. I took my diploma from the company I worked for. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, during that time, there were just, you know, a few hundreds of women, uh, Saudi women working, very few uh, Saudi women working in that company. And mm -hmm. uh, it was, uh, I, I had so many, like, family uh, objection to join. How are you going to join a company 
an oil company where men work. And even though I joined the medical part of it, they had a huge medical organization. Uh, how would you join uh, something like that? And uh, you will be mixing with men because, you know, we have this like men separate from women. Yeah, there's except the classes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So in, ha in hospitals is the yeah. only place where female doctors who uh, and nurses who are really looked kind of used to be looked uh, as like if, if you know when it comes to marriage opportunities i don't want to marry a nurse or maybe i don't even want to marry a doctor because they're mixing right yeah. now so i went and i joined even something more uh -huh. i'm like engineers and technicians and all wow. of that and management wow. and it was like people were saying how would you put and my father was very supportive and my mother my uncle was, but, but it's just like the other family members, how, uh, you know, people were ashamed to say we work for this company because the girls would like, uh, yeah. I had a friend who I met, uh, I start, I, I met her in the airport and like, she's my best friend now. That was like more than 20 years ago. And she wouldn't say that I, she was working for the same company I was working at. She was afraid I would uh, judge her. And then later on, I, you know, I, I mentioned it and she said, oh, I work for the same company. Wow, the company, wow. The company is huge, of course, so people don't really meet each other. But uh, it's just... There's a huge... Yeah, that, there's a huge now? stigma. There was a huge stigma around what what they thought women could do or, you know, where women belong as far as the work. How, you know, how did you work past some of those stigmas, like mentally and emotionally, you know, working past uh, some of the judgments? How did you work through that? It was uh, a little bit of a struggle to just, you know, um, show people that mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm the pa same person. I'm still, I'm conservative. I'm still, I'm, uh, um, a good, you know, uh, religious uh, girl, uh, even though I'm an, in the middle of 10 men. Because it's but about it, me. It's not about them. Right. The interesting thing is, is that you you felt that there need that you needed to defend your beliefs or your values just because you took That's on a professional role. Where do you, I mean, where do you think that, I mean, I can't say where do you think that stems from because we know that it can stem from just family traditions or just beliefs or just ideas, but, you know, just having to work through feeling like you have to defend, you know, being a woman in your personal life and being a woman in your professional life. What do you say for those women who are struggling with that or struggling, feeling like they have to decide between doing what they feel they really want to do or doing what they really love and still being able to fit their family dynamic. Yes. To feel that you have to choose this, to be one yes. or the other. Yes. This was like, uh, uh, I'm talking about something that was more than 25 years back, right? Later on, just, uh, you know, not every woman can be a doctor and a teacher and a nurse. You know, the, there, there, there must be other opportunities. And these opportunities started opening uh, for uh, the um, uh, women. And people started, like, understanding more. Uh, now, um, th the culture is, is more uh, aware, more understanding, more mature than it was uh, 25 years back mm -hmm. and uh, even though uh, there were doctors there were nurses and they were doing a good job and they had to go go through that you know um, again maybe the family the direct family with support but then mm -hmm. people around with just like oh you know she had to take that job or she put herself in that situation so um, I didn't find myself really like defending but I know what people 
you know, what goes into people's mind, then I right. would just like have to uh, just show, just be the person who I am. You know, I, I, I don't have to like, uh, they think if you go there, you're going to like wear another, <laughs> you know, be another person and come back a different person and you've changed and all of that. But uh, I've shown them that I don't have to change to take on a, a successful or mm. a, a career that is that is uh, that has diversity in it that mm -hmm. has men and women um, national and international um, yeah. I was uh, dealing with different different nationalities and uh, I was okay with it so um, now what happened now is I think the girls are having way greater opportunities and every every girl and woman they've been They've been on scholarships to the U.S., U.K., Australia. Uh, they've been exposed. Uh, the, 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 here, the company, the government, has just done a, an amazing job in helping, um, you know, develop the, um, uh, the women and involve them in the market. Because right. the market, you cannot have 50% of your population doing one or two things only uh, right. jobs you right. know so right. they know that there was power there and and they got involved and the thing that happened also and uh, was on my topic again for the global uh, obtainer conference was that a, a year or two years before that the market was open for sales women in the shopping malls which we never mm -hmm. had. I mean, you would go to a perfume shop mm -hmm. and you would have to deal with a man. You would go wow. to a makeup, a makeup shop and you would have to deal with a man and he would tell you what color is good for you. Wow. <laughs> and you wow. And I'm talking about like masculine. <laughs> oh my and goodness. Then, and I don't want to say there's anything wrong with that i mean we we can we see that i mean we see it but only men was, okay but then it goes even to more extreme and, we, and then we go to the closing section and then all levels of closing and imagine that so it was like you know uh, at, at the point we got used to it but i was just so happy when they introduced the uh, female um like women into these you know and, and now the regulation is no man is allowed to sell women's um items clothings really makeup this is an opportunity for women men can do the other section <laughs> they can do the men's section wow so but then but then that's almost that almost is like a double standard right because it's not that we want to shun the men out. It's just to um, include the women that, you know, it's that would kind of be like. And, it, and it's to give privacy for the women because we are a conservative uh, community. We are, you know, uh, for me, you know, to show up like this, or I mean, mm -hmm. some people show up with their hair. This is to others is something that they, they are, they don't want to do. They choose not to do. Or maybe they uh, are not allowed to do so. Um, the uh, you know just the, the the being able to go and uh, select my perfume or my makeup or my clothing uh, through a woman is way more comfortable. Believe me. Absolutely. <laughs> and Absolutely. yes, I know. Yes, I, I totally and, get it. Yes. I, yeah, and it, it was just and, amazing that there were only men holding those positions. That's what's amazing to me. Yeah, and for years it's been it's been like forever, and now it's uh, for the females. The men have great opportunity. I mean, there are lots of things. There are watches, uh, you know, men's uh, section perfumes, men's sections mm -hmm. clothes, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, all of the market is men. You know, when you go to the car shops, the car dealers, and um, everything. Uh, right hardware shops all of that it's just men so uh I'm usually so that's, that's just one level though right that's just what i mean we're we're talking about retail 
right? We're talking about just simple retail, right? Just just shopping, just items, just you know, supply and demand. But what is the ratio of women in in other professional settings as far as you know, women executives or you know, women head of companies or right? So I mean, uh, yeah. Although that that's some paved way, although that was never it was not seen. You, just, you said twenty twenty five years ago, but that's just that is on one level. But what about all of the other levels in which women have the ability? to thrive in professional settings and professional roles and executive roles um it's 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 changed you know uh, throughout my career i've seen it it's uh, it's changed a lot um now you know as i said women some women own their own companies uh but if we talk about just the uh, corporations and uh big international companies um mm -hmm. as i told you when i joined there were just few uh, right. And in the company I'm in now, I see women leading and uh, leaders and going to, uh, um, you know, are, are on their way to being managers and uh, maybe uh, executives. So there are a few executives, just few, but mm -hmm. there are many who are on the leadership track already and the leadership mm -hmm. path. And um, I've, I've just, uh, um, I've seen, they've, they've been there, but there were very, you know, very few, you can count them on your hands. Now mm -hmm. I see more, uh, and I hope to see that uh, mm -hmm. really women can reach that executive level uh, right. and, uh, you know, uh, lead, lead really high as like maybe senior uh, vice presidents or vice presidents and I maybe see. even company heads but in other companies in other companies as i told you the lady who just called me two days back and just surprised me she says i'm in a really good position in the company i'm in and it's an international company so yes it's it's growing i uh in the even in the medical sector uh i've seen women really uh being up there and leading and uh, uh, heading and being directors uh, so uh, it's uh, it's happening. It's there, it is happening. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I think it's just all over the world. It's uh, just the you know the equation is just sorted out differently. Right. right. But, well, the, uh, the magical thing is that the opportunities for women to earn money on their own terms is a huge leap in and of itself. Right. Where you know typically there would be some dependency on a husband, right? You didn't see, you, you would see the homemakers for the family, for the husband and the children, but you wouldn't see women running companies from their own home and being able to leverage the media to let the world know that they exist. They're earning on their own terms. And I think that is powerful. And in that case, we're definitely paving way. So speaking of women and in, in, in kind of trailblazing in 2014, you had the opportunity to be a TED Talk speaker and your topic or subject was called slap <laughs> now again for those of you who go and watch this ted talk unless you're able to speak the language you're going to miss out on some really good stuff so now we have the opportunity to get some of that insider information can you tell us a little bit more about slap what it means and the mission behind it and where it stemmed from Okay, yes. So I was invited to the TED Talk and I was just surprised. I didn't know who, uh, why, uh, but I was right. I just said yes immediately and I didn't know what the topic was. And <laughs> of course. Yeah, I didn't know what the topic was, but it's like an opportunity. Why say no? Uh, Absolutely. I've been waiting for this. And, uh, you know, I just, I was just going through some difficult time. Um, at uh, a lot of pressure at my work and then I said why don't I talk about that the pressure at work and then mm -hmm. I remembered you know it started way back it wasn't just the pressure at work it was the pressure at university it was a yeah. pressure when I was an apprentice and then it was a pressure when I traveled uh, because of my career and uh, you know and it just keeps happening and uh, there are things that happen. And I just, you know, what are those things happening to me? They're like 
slabs. <laughs> there are slabs, mm -hmm. uh, and these slabs have a good side to them and a bad side. A bad side to them, uh, they hurt. But they, you know, uh, you know, after the hurt, I realized that it's also an opportunity for growth. So uh, I, I started, you know, when the first baby, when the first, uh, when the baby is first born, you know, they turn them upside down and they're like, slap, right? Yeah. So they can breathe. And if the baby would talk, and this is how I started it, if the baby would talk, would be able to talk and say, why such a harsh, you know, uh, um, introduction to life? And then maybe the doctor, if he would hear them, we're just helping you to breathe. So you learn. Mm. Ooh, so, that's good. So, yeah, so it's just every slap is helping you to take a breath and giving you a lesson so you would learn uh, and be able to live a better life. So, explain some of those. Slap moments, if you don't mind. Okay. What, some of, what okay. were, if you're comfortable with kind of sharing. Yeah, I'm comfortable. It's just always emotional. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, one of my uh, first slaps was in the university. I was uh, um, taking, uh, studying allied medical science. Uh, I was uh, going for either physical therapy or uh, um you know some you know there were some different choices so um i wanted to, to complete that track and in the middle of my study the, the dean of the university uh changed and uh, uh they had we had a new dean and uh, he changed the policies and uh, regardless of what's you know the other people who were like there were standards and certain policies so because of the change, uh, 200 people were dropped off of the university. They wouldn't be able wow. to register. The system wouldn't accept them. So wow. uh, I, I, you know, I tried and just gave up, went back home, and I applied for this company for an apprentice program diploma in dental assisting. Uh, they called me six months later, and they said, we fixed the system. You can come back. Wow. And... Um, I just felt the difference. University, I was I was uh, away from my family, like uh, um, like three hundred miles away, and uh, mm. I was in a dorm, and it was like I, I I cannot describe it. The food, the dorm, the cold, the heat, everything, mm. and even walking through the university, it was just like in the middle of the heat. It was just it's a struggle. It was a struggle every day for me. It was a struggle. Mm. So. Mm. Uh, I just said, why should I go through that thriller girl? I'm studying here. I feel very comfortable. And I see a bit of a career. I'm not so sure of it, but I want to continue. So I just, you know, refused going back uh, to the university. And it's been six months, actually. So mm. I just continued my whatever I uh, chose. So um, going through uh, this uh, career, of course, I... I received a couple of uh, other slaps that were, I thought, major. Um, I I was doing really well, and um, they decided, uh, you know, to uh, select me to be part of the training staff instead of being a dental assistant to train dental assistants, and uh, to enhance that, they sent me and some, you know, colleagues to the United States to Iowa for a program of a little bit less than two, three months uh, to just get an enhancement class and see how things are working in the university so we can bring some training back to, the, to our, where uh, I'm working. And um, I was just 20-something years old, and I've never traveled alone. I'm always like side to side with my mom and dad and the family. And uh, it's a very new and very adventurous and scary experience for me. And I have two and a half months to go. What am I going to do on these two and a half months? So I'm a really um, kind of an, I don't want to say, and I, I, I'm, I'm a bubbly person and I talk to people and everything, but I'm really like shy and scared mm -hmm. at the same time. I'm really, really precautious. But I said mm -hmm. I had to do something. So mm -hmm. I went downstairs and I 
introduced myself to the cashier of the restaurant, who I didn't know. I just saw her tw- twice. And I said, and that's where <laughs> that's was a funny part. I say, hi, my name is Salsa Bila. What's your name? And she says, Ari. And I wish this lady would hear this because I love her. And I've never got to meet her again after that trip. Uh, she said, Ari. And I say, I told her, um, do you, uh, when is your day off? <laughs> Just like that. And she wow. said, today. Today. I said, oh, great. Where do you go on your day off? <laughs> <laughs> And she said, she said, I, um, I go to the movies, I go shopping, I go to restaurants. And then I told her, do you go with someone? And she said, sometimes with a sister, sometimes just alone. Alone. I said, can I go with you? Oh, wow. She said, so, you are, so, she said, you are so bold. Uh, and it's like, in my, inside myself, I said, no, I'm yeah. so slap. <laughs> ah, so, slap. <laughs> so explains so explains how slap ha, ha, you know kind of yes. how this concept kind of rose from that was well, this was like a bounce back for you this was you teaching yourself how to be open and yes. be a conversationalist to come out of that cocoon come out of that shell and this lady told me we're not allowed to speak to customers you know have make friends with customers but you know what wow. <laughs> um, yeah, in the, in, in, it was a restaurant in a hotel. She said, we're not allowed to make friends, you know, because maybe conflict of interest or whatever. I don't know. Wow. So we're not allowed to make friends with customers or, you know, mm. go out with customers. But you know something? It's my day off. Let's go. Where do you want to go? I said, you know, I told her, you know, the last time I've been into a movie, maybe when I was like 12 years old, <laughs> and I'm like 20 something, because we don't have movies where I am. Just now they opened movies this year. So, wow. yeah, and so she wow. took me and I watched Armageddon. I watched Armageddon <laughs> and it was Which was a great movie, by the way. Very, yes, very crazy. great movie. I love it. I watched it again, actually. And, I'll watch it. Uh, yeah. We went, <laughs> yeah, and I went um, also to a uh, to restaurants. And then mm-hmm. every weekend, you know, for two uh, or three weekends, we would go out. She would take me out. And um, at that time, email was just beginning, and it was just Hotmail, wow. I guess. And wow. I I yeah, I couldn't get track of, you know, I couldn't track her. Um, I just, you know, and I don't even know her last name. She's Ari. She used to work in the holiday and in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ari, if you ever see this. Hi. <laughs> so so going, going back to the idea of slapping the TED Talk, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I remember seeing you stretch these red coils, right? Yes. And yes. if you guys, again, if you watch the TED Talks, you'll see this. But uh, Salsa Bila had these red coils and she would stretch them and bounce them back. Can you explain what you were demonstrating at that time? When I, yes. When I first started, uh, I brought, brought, I tried to bring it. I couldn't find it. Yeah. It's a red... Um, metal piece of metal it's just any color it doesn't matter it's a piece of metal and um i said you know most people are just like this uh, their personalities or their their emotions are like this piece of metal and uh, when something hard happens most people break and bend and get you know deformed mm-hmm. and very few people are able to be, and I brought another example, be like that coil, that spring, that, you know, um, uh, coil that just, you know, bounces back. Mm -hmm. And uh, every slap I talked about was like, in the university, I think uh, the, I was redirected for a better career maybe, uh, even though it's not a university um, degree. It's not a bachelor's degree, but I was able to experience so much growth and so many options because I was not stuck in one profession. I have encountered and went through different experiences and different uh, professions from a dental assistant to a trainer. When I became a trainer, I became 
uh, a, a trainer for the dental assisting program, but also a trainer for CPR, hazardous materials, and I went into through, through, and then leadership, a little bit of leadership training, simple leadership training, and it was just, a, it's, it's a lot of growth. And then from that, I was holding quality assurance for that company. If I was a, a uh, someone who's studied like physical therapy, I would be there for a very long time and maybe go through a leadership path. But the opportunity for the, being a trainer, being a uh, a, and going through the management level even was, right. you know, I, I think it was just, so that slap was really good. The, the mm. university staff. Then the slap yeah. with my friend was really good because when I met Ari and then also people from the university started, you know, approaching me and said, you know, do you want to go out? And I started going out and then someone told me, do you want to go to Chicago? Oh, wow. And it's like, it was a lady and she said, we're a group of women, we're going to Chicago. And I was afraid, uh, really. And I told wow. the dean, look, if I go missing, I'm going with them. I'm going to <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> and I told my family and I went to Chicago and it was the most amazing. Thank you, Sally, if you ever hear us. Uh, it was the ama uh, most amazing experience because... Uh, I was uh, able to go to the Honkak building, the Navy Pier, and you know, I, I just went through so many, uh, went to, to different places, and it was just a beautiful ride. Um, I also was able to go on an airplane ride with the Dean. It was like the four seats, you know, and I was just beside the pilot, and he was giving me instruction on what to do, and you know, yeah. when to speak and when not to. And I was just like kind of not, you know, not really co-piloting, but almost there. So uh, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was really, really happy with the experience. Amazing. And then I did the thing of my dream. Uh, oh, it's funny maybe, uh, but uh, 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 horse uh, back riding. Wonderful. And I did that. Yes, and I did that, and um, I went to the radio, rodeo, and uh, oh. I just so, <laughs> so many things, and I just, you know, thank you for the start. Right. It hey. was amazing. <laughs> the hey. results and were amazing. I couldn't have had more fun, freedom, growth, friends. I couldn't have had better. <laughs> so you know, I'm glad. The release. I'm glad. Mm. The unleash. I'm glad. <laughs> I like that. I like the terminology you're using too. Unleashing and releasing. And slaps, I think, exist on so many levels, right? What we would think is rejection or abandonment is really the opportunity to learn our own independence, right? It's really the opportunity to say yes to more, right? And to shift our perspective on what we would typically do. And it opened up a whole new world for you. So what would you say to those women and young men who want to explore more, who want to get out of the habit of doing the things that they've always done, who want to see more of the world, who want to be exposed to more and have more access to opportunities? How would you what advice would you give to, to those young women and men who are looking to do that, who are looking to be able to bounce back from their slaps? All right. Um, I was just that, the, you know, the, the advice I gave in that TED talk. And actually, I know I don't want to make this so long, but uh, the last thing that happened to me, and I think it's very important to mention that was, um, when I was going to the conference in the Obtainer uh, magazine, the global conference, someone, uh, I had to excuse myself from work. And uh, at that time, uh, I had a, um, a supervisor who just looked at my file and said, you've been absent, you've been sick six days this year. And it was towards the end of the year, by the way, six days this year. You know, you're just the most person who's absent in the group. You, you're, you're just uh, 
you know, and now you're asking for a four days vacation to go to, you know, your conference. You're just worthless in the group. This is what I was told. You're just worthless. And I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to listen to what he was saying. I just wanted him to say yes, so I can go without being, <laughs> without having any penalties at work. I just wanted him to accept me to go. And deep in my side, I said, you think I am uh, useless, maybe useless. You think I am useless in the group? I'm going to speak to 200 people who think I am worthy. Mm. So I'm, you know, I'm taking that opportunity. So That's I, right. um, yes. And I just wanted to say when someone tells you that you're no good, uh, don't listen to that because everyone has good in them and they're good for something. Mm. They might not have yet realized what they're good for, but they are good for something. And they are good for something that they will make great. That's so right. this is the message. So how to overcome that is the coil concept is I was saying that every time I would get a slap, I would just revolve get <laughs> around mm -hmm. myself and I would look at different directions to see where is that open door because right. sometimes the pain just blocks our vision from seeing uh, all the um, opportunities around us so take a look around you a 360 degree look and you will find the door and every time you get a slap, just do that. And what happens is just like you're forming a personality like the coil, like a spiral coil. Next time you get pressured, I'm sorry I don't have that. Please watch the TED Talk. <laughs> and uh, next time you get that pressure and then, you know, it's pressure, it hurts. But as soon as that pressure goes away, you spring back, you bounce mm. back. And you're mm. as good as new. So, um, yes, just, just have that personality of, you know, the bouncing back personality. Look around. You will find opportunities. The one that was closed was not made for you. Mm. And on that note, and I'll add something to that. When you're feeling that pain, you allow the pain to be that open doorway to say, I'm never going to walk this way again because no one should ever have to experience working anywhere where someone says that they're useless. Yes. But we can allow that pain to say, you know what? I'm never going to be spoken to like this again. I will never be in an environment where I am not yeah. respected. And you know some congratulations on taking that opportunity and moving forward. Yeah. And I came back and I proved myself at work. And now um, I'm just like, um, like several re levels above where I was, uh, you know, in 2014. So I, I just grown, mashallah, you know, that's like God's blessing. I just grown from uh, um, outside of my work mm -hmm. and I've grown within my work. That's and right. I'm trying to make that balance and i'm trying to give the message to people that you can do it you can, you can have it. a career and you can also have passion. your uh, li live your passion you can That's do right. something with the community you know i've been with toastmasters for a long time and i've done a lot and i've been with the and i've, I've started the network marketing and i've done a lot i i i grew one of the you know, it was really new here and I grew a very large organization. I trained a lot of people and um, uh, I want to do my speaking business. And I've, I've been doing it every now and then. And this is a great opportunity. Look at us. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here. You're, you're, you're here. Right now, you are in the U.S. in Atlanta, Georgia. That is where you are right now. Okay. <laughs> and it is happening. It is happening. I'm so proud to, to, to know you now and to be a part of this journey with you as you rise into your, your dawn of new days. So tell us what's next for you. Tell us what's next for you. 
Okay, what's next is, um, um, you know, I've, I've, I've served for a very long time where, I'm, where I am, and I've landed now in a really, really good place. And uh, I just, uh, I've, I've been giving talks to the new hires, the young talents we have. I'm able, I'm, I'm, I, I just want to give them a few more talks this year, this coming year, 2020. And mm -hmm. then um, I've actually initiated a, a corporate uh, Toastmasters for them to, to, I founded one club, so I call it Paradigm. And I want them to go through that. Uh, hopefully they practice and they join. I'm trying to encourage them. So I want to leave that mark at the place I work at and then take all my passion, my time, and really pour it into being a, an inspiring, motivational, uh, international speaker. I hope I can Amazing. be international. You uh, are already international, international now, right? Here. <laughs> right here, right now. South Sabila is happening right here, right now. This is not by chance, my dear. This is not by yeah. chance. This so is this all is because, because my, of the that you planted thus far. Yeah, you're doing an amazing job. job. And I just want to say all the way from here to you, thank you for what you're doing. And I'm sure some of the students that you're working with are thanking you as well. And for founding your new initiative, Paradigm. This is amazing. I'm sure you're going to be doing amazing work through there. How can people stay in touch with you, or get in touch with you, to get more information about booking you for speaking? How can we stay in touch with you? All right. So um, I have, um, you know, the, the website is, is like half up. There's a website, but it's not. I, I, I don't know how reliable. I think the most reliable is uh, through my Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, people can just uh, direct message uh, through my Instagram, uh, my Facebook account, and uh, my LinkedIn account. And uh, what else? Remind me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what's your... I, I, what's your so you, your email, tag name and your social media. All right, let me. Okay, let me. I need to get that. I need to get because I keep getting confused. It's Sabila dot Harvey, but I, you know, I have to get. You know, I just want to make sure. Okay, Sabila yeah. dot Harvey. Yeah, I don't know. You need to write it because it's very long. It's S A S A B I L A. Uh, Harvey H A R B Y at gmail.com so that's uh you know where people can you know there's a website if you search my name you'll find a lot you know just if yeah. you write so sabila al harbi you'll find a lot you can see my ted talk also on uh, youtube and it's slap uh, exclamation mark sal sabila and you'll find it you'll find someone wearing my traditional you know the black uh uh we call it abaya uh, uh -huh. and it's just the black dress and the black veil so um, yes. yeah so that's so i yes i i would look forward you know to having more connections i would love that absolutely salsa it has i said salsa bila it has <laughs> been amazing <laughs> salsa, but short, no, salsa bila it has been amazing <laughs> chatting with you and i know you're gonna get your day started um Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing your message with us. And we look so forward to seeing more uh, coming from Paradigm. And we look forward to seeing you come back here to the U.S. And if you do come back here sooner than later, please let me know so that I can come yeah. and see you and be in the audience and cheer you on because I think you're doing amazing work. I think you're very brave and very bold and you are setting the stage for so many women that are around you. So thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you on the flip side. It, it, it's it's uh, a pleasure. Thank you for having me and uh, really, really appreciate it. And just like, this is a great, great, uh, you know, uh, thing you know thank you for allowing me to share my message at your platform so uh, i wish us all success and uh, <sighs> growth and uh, you know oh, just you know, continue to inspire continue to empower and continue to uh, lead 
So Happy. I love you much. Thank you so much you. for this opportunity. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's been amazing. And I, I hope maybe we'll make a speak and write face to face and meet Lisa face to face one of these days and thank her for yes. actually allowing this connection to take place. So yes, yes. Soon yes. again. Thank you. And you know something now Saudi Arabia has opened the doors just a few months back to for for um, tourists. So yeah, so you, you can apply for a tourist visa. We are having amazing things going on here. And it's it's you know, we have all different kind of uh, um how can I say this uh, geographical areas. We have a lot of sand, sand dunes, beautiful sand. Oh. We have the the mountain areas. We have the oases. We oh. have all different things because you know it's just different. There are different levels. So we have really cold places in the winter, oh. and we yes. have really, really, really warm places actually places in the summer and we have the middle <laughs> honey i look so forward to to coming and so i hope they don't close it before i get a chance to come and visit so no i hope right? it stays open i hope it keep stays it, open. okay <laughs> listen now keep it together you officials over there don't close it before our sisters on this side get a chance to come and visit okay i would love to be in the traditional wear and just kind of smell the air and taste the food and all that oh, good yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, we have amazing food. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I've seen the dishes. I've seen I'm like, oh, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. <laughs> so if I come, will you cook me a good meal? Definitely. Oh, I'm good at that. <laughs> so I'm coming. Definitely. As a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, Listen, it's almost morning time for me here, so my stomach is already yeah. growling, so. But sorry already... to keep you up. Sorry to keep you up. <laughs> oh, no, it was funny. I hope it's worth it. It's oh, worth it. Was it. So worth it, guys. Guess what time it is? It, it is two a.m. here in the U.S. right now. But <laughs> to us, this message was so important to share. That time is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I'm just so glad that you were able to come on and make the time and we were able to do this and spread this good news, spread this good message. So we'll see each other very, very soon. Yes, we will. Thank you very so much. Really Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. <laughs>